and welcome to The Debrief from the Business of Fashion, where each week we go deep on our most popular BOF professional stories with the correspondents who created them. I'm Lauren Sherman. Feather-covered handbags, pearl-strapped sandals, sky-high velvet platforms. 2022 fashion was all about glitz, glam, and reminding everyone that we're no longer holed up in our houses. But let's be clear, sweatpants, the peak pandemic uniform, are here to stay. However, it seems that the return of dress-up clothing is pretty permanent too. Today, I'm joined by retail correspondent Kathleen Chen to discuss her recent article, Why Sequins and Platform Heels Are Here to Stay, which explores what's happening in the market in 2023. Kat, it is so nice to have you on the debrief once again. It's my pleasure to be here, Lauren. I'm so excited to talk about this topic. I feel like the most fun stories tend to be these simple trend pieces, but um, we can really unpack the nuances and geek out. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And there's always like a business lesson in them. So tell me what brought you to this particular idea at the end of the year. Obviously, it's holiday season, so people are dressed up anyway, but this is more than just holiday dressing. So I had been hearing about this occasion where, boom, the strength in the category from retailers in conversations and in earnings calls for quite a bit now. A month ago, I was speaking to Jen Hyman, who's the CEO and founder of Rent the Runway, and she was saying that Rent the Runway effectively doubled its volume of occasion wear, which includes both the classic party attire, dresses, gowns, suiting, but also outfits that you'd wear to a lunch meeting for work. Um, So for the purpose of our conversation, I'm defining occasion wear as anything that you would wear when you are dressing up. The other side of this bifurcated lifestyle that we're living which is like sweats like us right now. (laughs) And I think this is the case for a lot of retailers. In my story, I cite some data from Edited that found that compared to 2019, in the second half of 2020, brands and retailers in the US and UK had almost twice as many styles in dresses that are embellished. So that could be sequins and beads and jewels or, or, or feathers. And these sequined dresses are selling out more compared to 2019, about 52% higher. And then high heels, even more so, 121% more than 2019. And I think anyone walking around Soho or Fifth Avenue or Melrose in LA, they would notice the retail windows that they pass. Most of them feature some kind of sparkly dress or colorful heels, maybe a little bit of suiting on the men's side. And so as a reporter, the evidence is there. And then as a consumer, this trend is pretty inescapable. Speaking of Melrose on LA, I was there yesterday. What did you see? Well, I went to go to the row, not to do anything (laughs) else, which does not have sequins, thankfully for me. But I did go into Isabel Morant, which is an amazing brand, and they do such a good job merchandising. But I walked over and there was an entire row of like sequined jackets and dresses and Rachel Comey, same thing. Your story came to life for me after walking through those stores. And it's not that this other stuff is completely disappeared and you can't buy a pair of sneakers or whatever, but it's a really heavy part of the mix right now. And it's clearly what people want. For sure. Yeah. I think one of the nuances in my story was that it's not that this casual way of dressing that we saw in 2021. Like multiple people in in my interviews had mentioned Birkenstocks and they were saying how in 2020 and 2021, all they were were Birkenstocks and sort of like comfortable knit stuff. And I think it's natural that now that the world is even more open compared to last year when we had just gotten vaccinated, that there's this desire for a little bit of escapism. Yeah, let's talk a bit more about that flip in consumer behavior. And maybe the turning point were those Manolo Birkenstocks, which you referenced the BOF Insights report, which we did a podcast on, on the report on shoes. And they mentioned those Manolo Birkenstocks as like, they had that classic rhinestone Manolo buckle. And it did sort of feel like a turning point in terms of of what people wanted to wear because they didn't want to give up their comfort, but they wanted some sort of embellishment other than the obvious like 
return to the real world reaction. What do you think has changed in the way consumers think about dressing that is making them dress up so much right now? So this was actually the bigger question for my story. It's whether this desire to look more dressed up is permanent, whether we're in a different spot than we were in in 2019. And I think my conclusion turned out to be yes. Because at first, like you said, the weddings and and galas, uh, you know, the original impetus was the pandemic hangover, where we just had this insane backlog of events. Anecdotally, I went to think eight or nine weddings this year, and that might have been timing, but there was just so many social things going on this past year. But the buyers and consumers and creatives in the industry that I spoke to, they had also mentioned a sense of this abstract idea of wanting to dress for the moment and that the appetite is different from 2019. And I think it comes down to just intention. People are being a lot more thoughtful about how they dress up. And because we have this kind of dichotomy of dressing in our lifestyles, right? Like when we're working from home with hybrid work, we're not even thinking about what we're wearing. And I think, you know, all the sweatsuits and cozy sweaters and maybe cashmere pants that we bought in 2021. I bought a pair of cashmere pants in 2021 and I wear them all the time still. And it it feels nice, but you only need so many of those pieces. Whereas now there are all these different events. Obviously, most people don't want to do too much repeating. We should be doing more outfit repeating. Beyond all of that, there is just this appetite for really having a look having a slightly louder look. I think focusing on sequence is almost a little bit of a misconception because it's not just sequence. It's anything that's just more of a statement that people are looking for, like the the split uh, hem pants and the velvet shoes. Pre-recording, Kat and I were talking about how I am dressing up more. And I mentioned that I bought a pair of split hem pants actually from Totem. And then I have a pair of velvet from their like vintage, real, real Ferragamos. But yeah, that's my version of this. That's very much part of the story, Lauren, that I I wish that I had sort of focused on a little bit more is that it's not just the sequence, like Totem's occasion capsule is not what you would think is like party wear, like fringes, like bold colors. It's still very smart tailored items, but they are just a little bit more. And like, that's what occasion wear is about today. That makes a lot of sense. And let's take a break for a word from our sponsors. But when we return, Kat, I want to talk about some examples of what brands are doing to zhuzh up their collections and then also what humans are doing to zhuzh up their lives. We'll be right back. Kat, welcome back to the debrief. So you had a really great lead example for a brand that has mostly been pretty rigid and subtle in their design that have taken a twist to things in the last couple of years. For sure. Mark Cross, which is this fairly small American leather goods brand. They're known for this very structured, boxy trunk-like bag called the Grace Bag because Grace Kelly carries a version of it in the rear window. And it's this really, I would say it's a pretty dressy bag, but that's been sort of their look for decades. And last year, they hired a new creative director. Her name is Rebecca Mendoza. She worked on a collection of evening wear handbag. So basically like the boxy bag, they added like a little feather strap to it. And then they also introduced the satchel, the small satchel that you could like wear with a with a crossbody strap or there's a chain to it that you could use in sort of a more evening context. But she said that it's not like they were looking at data or or you know they had some sort of empirical incentive to launch this collection. She said that it just felt right at the time at the end of 2021, beginning of 2022. 
And so they just went with it. And these pieces are like instant top sellers. And now they're going to be introducing new color waves. And so they totally were spot on with what people are still looking for, which is dressed up, but even more embellishments. And in my reporting, there were just so many different examples of that. I was talking to Tanya Taylor. And one of the most interesting things she said was actually that there's been a return to dresses. She's known for her dresses. But in 2019, department stores, her buyers were more interested in separates. And now it's back to dresses in like a very big way. Yeah. And you also talked to some customers about this stuff, right? Yes. I talked to Carrie Peary, who is an editor and an influence. And she spoke a lot about being thoughtful with her purchases and versatility. She was one of the people that I spoke to who had mentioned the Birkenstocks and how there was a turning point where she was leaving the house again and she wanted to get dressed for leaving the house. And she was saying how, you know, some of the shoes that she'd bought recently are Amina Mwadi's, which is like, I think, the staple of occasion wear right now. Which is a shoe line that sells a flared heel that, again, our insights report, if you haven't downloaded it yet, you should. They talk about this, but like the flared heel that she came out with, which she launched, I think, around 2015. But her brand took off during the pandemic. Even when people were in lockdown, they were buying it. I think just like it was such a fantasy. And that flared heel is probably a little easier to walk in than a traditional stiletto, but it's still just as outrageous looking. So Carrie bought a pair of those? Yeah, she bought a pair and she bought a pair of LaRude platforms. LaRude is also a fairly new shoe brand and they're known for making like platform sandals and platform boots. And yeah, the platform trend is really big right now. I actually bought a pair of satin platform heels recently. (laughs) LaRude is an interesting brand. Marina used to be a fashion editor. She worked at style.com for a long time. She's super great. So it's also, she has that editor's eye. I actually did not know that. So Carrie was just saying how, actually she had also mentioned a Kate Bustier that like she had bought recently and how this is definitely a look. She can put on some earrings and wear it to a party and then put a jacket over it and go to dinner with her husband later. And so I think versatility is still very much part of the equation. And she was saying that the casualization that began in the 2010s, like the late 2010s, definitely before the pandemic, that that trend is still going on. But it's not necessarily contradicting our appetite for these sort of louder, shinier statement pieces in our wardrobe. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. I rented the movie The Fablemans the other night. It's actually very good, but you see they sort of scan how huge the audiences were back then at these movie theaters, and everyone was super dressed up. And the thing I was thinking about was like, can you imagine going to a movie theater dressed up and how weird you would look? It's the same thing going to the airport you have an airport look now, but it's not. People used to get like wear suits to the airport. People used to wear suits to go to the movies. You can't do that anymore. Like, I think the important thing that you say in the story is that culture has changed totally and stretchy pants are not going away. But the way that you use these things has changed in terms of wanting to look different. And a big question I had for you was I was thinking and I'm trying really hard not to compare what is ever is happening in the economy right now with 2008 because it's just such a out of the ordinary financial situation. We had a recession that was thrust upon us because of an environmental health scare. And so you can't compare that to the Lehman Brothers crash or, or whatever. But I'm thinking around 2010, the country, U.S. and the globe, global, we were still probably in a downturn or coming right out of it. It was a time of like really crazy shoes. Like the shoes were just insane. Pierre Hardy was doing shoes for Balenciaga that were amazing. And there, but there were other brands too. I had this pair of like white 
Celine pumps that I fully could not walk in. And I just love them so much and would just try to wear them with like lavender pants and white Celine pumps to things and just walk around. And I could, you know, I, I look bad. But the point being that this, this thing that happens after a time of quietness where people sort of start to get loud is common. Obviously, this looks different than that time. But the question I have for you is looking ahead, this year is not going to be good. Whether it's a recession or a downturn or just like a weird craziness, it's going to be a tough year for retailers in particular. Everybody I've talked to is like, we're not excited about next year at every price point, et cetera. This last fall has been really tough on a lot of them. What direction are people going to move in as we move out of the sort of pandemic reaction mode to a, well, the pandemic's sort of still happening, but we're all back to work, but also money is tighter than it was. How do you think consumers are going to react to that. And and the retailers you talk, I know you talked to Sam from Nordstrom. Did anyone have any thoughts about what they thought was going to happen within the next year in terms of consumer behavior? I think everybody is scared to talk about that right now, or, or at least they're very... Um, I don't think anybody knows right now. I actually just... I'm, I'm writing our uh, This Week in Fashion about exactly this, about consumer sentiment and about where demand will go next year. And I think we've been living in in this space of uncertainty for a really long time now. Like the colloquialism that I used in that story was that everybody has been waiting for the other shoe to drop and the other shoe hasn't dropped. Consumer demand is, is definitely cooling, but at the same time, some of the more recent reads of consumer sentiment has gone up. I think part of that is just inflation easing up a little bit. And so I do think that there is still a lot of opportunity to put relevant products in front of the consumer in 2023. And so there's definitely going to be a way to to win, even with sort of this gloomy atmosphere that there will be demand for certain styles over others. And pretty much everybody I spoke to was pretty confident about the fact that even after we go through this sort of holiday parties, this jubilant feeling, and as the dust settles in 2023, this way of statement dressing and this intentionality and how we get dressed up will remain. There's so many things that that can be done the minute you hear inflation is chilling out, people are like, let's spend money. I mean, we're an economy based on consumption. Our GDP is driven by consumption and most mature economies at this point are, but we're not an economy based on production. We're based on consumption. So we have been trained since the minute we were born to consume. And it's very cyclical. I think it just, what happens is the cycles stay the same, but the content in the cycles changes. So a great example is a a flat from Totem that has a pearl anklet. Instead of having a, a regular leather strap, it has a pearl anklet. I know I mentioned them before, but they are very heavy on this occasion where stuff that you're talking about, it's very specific to what you're saying. It's not just for weddings and things. So I think that that's going to stick around for a while. It has been some time since there's been a real minimalist movement on the runways and things. And I think that that is, do I, the row is a sort of an anomaly to that, but even in their styling is not minimalist. The clothing is, but the styling isn't. So I would say curious to see what happens when Phoebe Philo's collection actually comes out, if it does this year, and see if that shifts the like bigger picture fashion story in the way that she's been able to with every other thing she's ever done. Because if you look at the way just high fashion is right now, it's super embellishment heavy or like Prada, think about Prada and the triangle just being on everything. I went to the Prada store in Milan during Milan Fashion Week. I said, do you have a pair of kitten heels with the, without a triangle? And they were like, no, sorry, we don't. So I could see it moving. But I think that this is also indicative of the move away from like logo stuff. So during that sort of casualization era, it was also really heavy on merchandise and logos and logo bags and everything. I think we're going to see 
a slight move away from that stuff. And this trend you're talking about is part of that. So it's all cycles. It just, the cycles look so different as we get more comfortable. This was a great story, Kat. It was such a good end of year piece, a beginning of year piece, and a reminder that this isn't just about like New Year's Eve. Well, thank you so much, Lauren. This was so fun. And it sounds like you know something about Phoebe coming out next year that we don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't. I maybe, maybe I need to get on that. I don't know. I think it will, but we'll see. It may never happen. The truth is, but I, I really think it will. From, from what I have heard from people, it will, but I don't know much. I need to get on that reporting. Kat, this was so fun. I hope you have a great 2023. We'll talk very soon and appreciate you taking the time. Of course. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you as always for having me. Be sure to check out Kat's article, Why Sequins and Platform Heels Are Here to Stay at businessoffashion.com. The link to this and other articles available to BOF professional subscribers only is also in the show notes. You have been listening to The Debrief, produced and edited by Emma Clark, Kate Barton, and Eric Bria in the BOF studio. I'm Lauren Sherman, and I'll be back next Wednesday with a new episode. Thanks so much for joining us, and be sure to follow us wherever you get your podcasts. You can join BOF Professional today with an exclusive 25% discount on an annual membership covering key industry topics from sustainability to technology to marketing with access to our case studies, live events, and iOS app. To get this special offer and benefit from 25% off of a membership, head to the link in the episode show notes or enter the coupon code DEBRIEF at checkout. Visit businessoffashion.com slash memberships. Thank you.